Hey Chris, can you just make sure a lot of people have been commenting I've been a little bit out of focus in a lot of the clips. Can you just make yeah. sure that it's right well, on my it's eyes good. here? We're good. All right, let's You're roll this. You're going to be in focus 80% of the time. Awesome. Hey guys, it's Jordan from DP Hang Review on, TV. Out of focus. Hey. Welcome back DP Review TV viewers, it's Jordan Drake and I'm here to talk about ProRes RAW because we've looked at it coming out of the Nikon Z6, the Panasonic S1H, I've had some complaints about it, however there's a new update to Apple's Final Cut that might address a lot of those so we're going to take a look at those today. Now a lot of people familiar with working with other video RAW formats, they were kind of surprised with Apple's ProRes because it didn't seem like you had a lot of the flexibility, specifically the ability to adjust your white balance or change your ISO after the fact, and Apple has now added those to Final Cut. Now I expect we'll also see these features in Adobe Premiere or Avid, unfortunately they're not available just yet. So what we had before with ProRes RAW working in Final Cut is something I called basically a super log file. You could do a RAW to log conversion, it would give you something that looks like a normal log file but with a whole bunch of color information, really nice to know to it. The problem is when I tried to do heavy exposure pushes or especially if I really needed to move the white balance, the image would still fall apart, which is something I wasn't expecting with raw video. So with the new updates in Final Cut, now it looks exactly like working with any other video raw format. You have a drop down menu to set your ISO, you have a slider for your white balance, and you also have exposure compensation in there as well. Very simple, very streamlined. Okay, so the interface is more familiar, but are we actually going to see any difference in the results? Well, I went back to my earlier test when we were looking at S1H ProRes RAW, put that same clip in with the new software, set the white balance where it should be, and everything looks perfect. Just to confirm things, I did the exact same thing in a scene where the white balance is completely out with skin tone in it, and you can see here you can bring everything back in line with no issues in the image. It's a huge improvement. Now one thing filmmakers are going to be really familiar with, but a lot of photographers or enthusiasts might not be aware of, is this ability to set your ISO after the fact. Now RED's been doing this for a long time, but it's very similar to the ISO invariance tests that we do here at DP Review. Essentially what you're doing is shooting the image at your base ISO and then bringing your exposure up. Now you still get some noise in the image when you do that, the benefit is you hang on to a whole lot more highlight information. However, things have gotten a little bit more complicated in sensor design in the last few years. So with those earlier sensors, you would just set it to your base lowest sensitivity, shoot everything there, and in post bring it all up to the exposure level. You didn't have to actually dial in your ISO on the day of shooting. Now, however, we've got a lot of cameras with dual gain sensors in them. So what that means is you've got essentially two base sensitivities. Now it seems pretty straightforward. A lot of cinema cameras or the Panasonic S1H will tell you what those sensitivities are, but a lot of still cameras won't. Okay, so how are you going to figure out what that second native ISO is? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. Just put your camera into its lowest sensitivity while recording RAW and raise your ISO until you see a sudden drop in the amount of noise in the image. That lets you know you've just found that second gain setting. So now how do you expose the image? Well, you're going to pick. Basically, you treat your camera like it's got two sensitivities. It's got a lower sensitivity that you can use in bright light, and it's got a higher sensitivity that you can use in very low light. Now after that you fine tune your exposure in post using that ISO slider. I prioritize to make sure my highlights are protected, then use the exposure slider to bring those shadows and mid-tones to where you want them to be. So things are looking really good for ProRes RAW recording. The performance is outstanding on my three-year-old MacBook Pro. I can still cut these files very easily on the road. And we're seeing a bunch of camera manufacturers jumping on and choosing ProRes RAW as their preferred format for recording it. So it's great that things are so much more flexible, but there is one real downside. So I was really excited to grab a Fujifilm GFX 100 and start shooting some medium format RAW video. But it turns out that some functions aren't available in some cameras. So Photo Joseph brought to my attention that there's actually a list on Apple's site, not only for which cameras are supported, but of those cameras, which features they're going to give you. And the Fujifilm cameras and all the Sony cameras are not giving you that white balance adjustment that I think is so important when shooting raw video. On top of that, the Nikon cameras don't offer you either white balance or ISO or exposure adjustment. You're only going to have that raw to log conversion option. So what I'm really hoping is whoever's responsible, Apple or Atomos or the camera manufacturers, they can get to work making all of these cameras fully compatible with these features. Because that A7S III is coming soon, and if I can't adjust my white balance, I'm going to throw the camera into the river.
So we're gonna be talking about ProRes RAW a lot because it's gonna be supported on the Panasonic S5, the Sony A7S III, and probably a bunch of cameras that are coming out in the fall. I do think it's gonna be the preferred recording format if you're looking for compressed RAW. But if you wanna see all the updates, don't forget, follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Make sure that you subscribe to DP Review TV so you can check out all that info soon.